Hello everybody, welcome to another legendary build. Today we're going to celebrate 600 subscribers as King Arthur. As always, keep in mind that these videos are about capturing the spirit of the character rather than capturing their abilities perfectly. With that said, let's start with ability scores. Using the standard point array will put the 15 and 14 to strength and constitution. Like all good legendary figures, he's at least a little superhuman. Next we'll put the 13 and 12 into charisma and intelligence. You need both to rule a kingdom and command armies. We'll put the 10 into dexterity since we don't need it, and we'll dump wisdom. Merlin warned him that was his sister, but he didn't listen. For race, we'll go with variant human, putting our plus ones into strength and charisma and taking the tough feat. We'll take religion for our skill and speak common and infernal. What? Merlin was a cambion, he probably taught him the lingo. For background, we'll go with noble, getting position to privilege, history and persuasion, and picking chess and sylvan because European yokai. For class, we're going to go with Fighter. We'll get Strength and Constitution saving throws, pick Athletics and Animal Handling, and be proficient with all weapons, armor, and shields. At level 1, we'll get Second Wind in our fighting style, which will be dueling. At level 2, we'll get Action Surge, and at level 3, we'll get our Martial Archetype. We'll take Battlemaster, taking Painter Supplies for Giggles, and getting our Superiority Dice and Maneuvers. We'll take Commanding Presence, Tactical Assessment, and Rally to start. At level 4, we'll get an Ability Score Improvement, which we'll use to take the Shield Master feat. At level 5 we'll get extra attack, and at level 6 we'll get another ability score improvement, which we'll use to take the inspiring leader feat. He's King Freaking Arthur, you'd better feel inspired. At level 7 we'll get Know Your Enemy, another superiority die, and two more maneuvers. We'll take Brace and Commander Strike. At level 8 we'll get another ability score improvement, which we'll put into Strength, and at level 9 we'll get Indomitable. At level 10 we'll get D10 superiority dies and two more maneuvers, picking Pushing Attack and Trip Attack. At level 11, we'll get a second extra attack, and at level 12, we'll get another ability score improvement. We'll take the Fighting Initiate feat, picking Superior Technique for another Superiority die and Repost. At level 13, we'll get a second Indomitable, and at level 14, we'll get another ability score improvement. We'll take the Martial Adept feat, getting another Superiority die, and picking Lunging Attack and Disarming Attack. Fun fact, he once had Excalibur and Avalon stolen and replaced with Fakes, and fought the guy who had the real ones. He held his own long enough to figure out what was going on, disarmed him, and then kicked his ass. And Guinevere actually chose Lancelot over this badass? Stupid thought. Anyway, at level 15 we'll get Relentless, another superiority die, and two more maneuvers. We'll finish up with Sweeping Attack and Menacing Attack. At level 16 we'll get another ability score improvement which we'll put into Charisma. At level 17 we'll get a second Action Surge and a third Indomitable, and at level 18 we'll get D12 superiority dice. At level 19, we'll get one last ability score improvement, which will cap our strength. And at level 20, we'll get another extra attack. Now that we're level 20, we finally have our modifiers. Moving on to inventory, we'll give him a set of chainmail, since that's what he's shown wearing the most. We'll also give him a shield for Pridwin, a spear for Rongominiad, and a dagger for Karnwinan. The only one of these that maybe does something special is Karnwinan, but no dagger in 5e shrouds you in shadow. And besides, that one's just speculation. Or at least that's all I was able to find during research. If it ain't Excalibur, nobody seems to care. And speaking of, we obviously must have Excalibur. But what is Excalibur? What does it do? Well, popular media likes to make it some kind of holy sword, and if it's from an anime, it's almost guaranteed to fire a laser. However, the Excalibur from the Tales really only does two things. Cut really, really good, and glow. For one, its name literally means cut steel, and two, it's said to glow with the light of 30 torches. And in one of the few, if not the only, descriptions we get of the sword, its blade is described as being like two flames of fire. So a sword that is like fire, that glows, and can cut through steel. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like a lightsaber to me. So I present for your consideration, the Sunblade. And if you want to choose the artifact angle, just make it Dawnbringer. Literally the same weapon, it's just sentient. We'll also take a periapt of wound closure for Avalon. Our AC is 18, our movement speed is 30, and our average HP is 204 with 20 D10 hit dice. And with that, we are done. Thank you everybody so much for watching. This milestone took longer to reach than the others, but it proves we're still growing. If you'd like to support my channel, there's a link to my Patreon down in the description. Let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments, and I'll see you all next week when I make General Grievous from Star Wars.